This is Keith David, and I'm here to say it's time to wake up. My name is Dr. Pamela Davis. I attended Johns Hopkins University and Howard University College of Medicine. I've practiced anesthesia for over 35 years. I'm having a great deal of difficulty with the medical practice because it's moved away from practice and it's become a business. Uh, my name is Brent Wisner. I'm a partner here at the law firm of Baum, Hedlund, Oresti, and Goldman. Uh, I focus primarily on suing large pharmaceutical companies in ways that really annoy them. And probably the most important pharmaceutical case that I'm known for is a case involving Stuart Dolan and a suicide that he committed six days after starting a type of drug called Paxil. I'm Dennis Basson. I'm a part-time professor of human biology, but I've been teaching on that level since 1985. When you make it so attractive, if you poison 5,000 people, I'll give you an extra $100,000. Since 1985, the medical profession has shifted toward the relief of symptoms rather than creating wellness. The economic interest of a pharmaceutical company is simply not to cure people. Physicians and clinicians are writing them for long-term use and it's doing harm to the patients long-term. If they cure somebody, then they no longer can make money off of that individual. Greed is really easy to manifest when one drug can make you $30 billion. Big Pharma, I think, is close to a trillion dollars a year globally. You can make $30 billion selling a side effect ridden sugar pill. In the bottom line, it's about money. As a former pharmaceutical rep, I know what these drugs can do. Benzodiazepines in the label should be written for nine days or less. Drugs that are meant for four days, use them for four days, not four weeks, not 40 years. Drug-induced brain injury, or DIBI, is a very legitimate term. So this drug-induced brain body injury now becomes the focus and the intent of misdiagnosis, mis management and disinformation. They go back and say, I cannot sleep. I am now more irritable. I'm more upset easily. I have no patience for my children and my appetite has changed. I've gained 15, 20 pounds. What's happened? I, I've talked to doctors. I've deposed physicians who say they've never read the label. It is disgusting. It is inexcusable that a doctor would not have known the side effects of a drug that they're prescribing is inexcusable. That, that's not medicine. They also are writing drugs off-label that um, are indicated for other disease states that affect your brain and your brain chemistry. My name is Martha Rosenberg. I'm an investigative reporter. Um, what I try to do is debunk some of the messages that people don't realize are really from Big Pharma and they think are from doctors or researchers and they're actually funded advertising marketing messages. Gabapitin should not be used in replacement for opioids because gabapitin does the same thing as benzodiazepines. It causes withdrawal symptoms, it causes um, long-term um, disabilities, it changes your brain structure, and it should not be used. Now, these kinds of informative documentations is going to be a spearhead for those of us who want to see a change with our patients. People are too accepting of what a physician tells them today. And pay attention, if the patient didn't come to you with an anxiety complaint, with a condition, a family history of, of, of mental disorder, then perhaps something you have given or administered may well be the cause. Today, the statistical average for time face to face with a physician is three to five minutes. I believe there are definitely alternatives to managing one's pain besides pharmaceutical products. They don't have any blood tests for depression. They don't have a way of uh, measuring your brain chemistry to see if you have bipolar. What they do is they ask you questions. You know, we think that at the basis of most of, of mental illness are uh, imbalances in neurotransmitters. And what's so, the test for that? Um, well, we don't have uh, we don't have a blood test. We don't have a test for that. And then we uh, and then we explored various treatments. I work at a psychiatric hospital and have for about 15 years. And 
my truth is that um, the things that are supposed to help fix the children sometimes uh, cause more of an issue. There isn't a brain scan, so it's really a diagnostic, uh, it's a clinical diagnosis. Okay. It's made by talking to people and, um, you know, and ascertaining that they're having certain difficulties that meet criteria for an illness. Some things that I personally witnessed myself was some doctors um, prescribing different medications to kids so they can extend their stay at our hospital. So we sometimes have to go by trial and error. There is no repercussion for the patients that's disabled for life, loses their loved ones, their family, their fortunes, their lives. Other times we're lucky and we hit the right molecule. And then the diagnosis, once it's made, will guide treatment. The patients, the people, are losing their families because the MDs are not saying to the family that these medications could cause these symptoms. But by and large, these tend to be, you know, serious, uh, serious episodes that require treatment for, I would say, uh, easily six months to a year. It's okay to feel grief. It's okay to feel a little anxious before an exam. It's absolutely normal to have had enough when you've had no sleep. These are not necessarily items that need to be treated with a medication. I wish doctors would understand that food is medicine. My name is Janice Miles. I'm a registered dietitian here in Queens, New York, where I work in a psychiatric facility. It's very frustrating when I see these patients being prescribed medicine. Before you go to the psychiatrist, you need to go to your internist or even to a dietitian. Hi, I'm Christy Reeves with Beloved Restoration and I want to show you today some things you can do to help better your health physically, mentally, and emotionally. A lot of times doctors are simply just medicating a poor diet. I know doctors give us pills for everything from high cholesterol to antidepressants, and I'm going to show you some things you can do so you don't have to depend on that so much. Food is the best medicine for most of what ails us. I worked at the second largest psychiatric hospital in the state of Tennessee, 2,000 beds. If you had anxiety and you took certain drugs like Ativan, Xanax, and Clonopin, there was never any mention of the addictive properties and there, no mention of the fact that you should not even take them more than three or four weeks at a time. I'm very disappointed that clinicians that prescribe these medicines off-label do not listen to patients when they come back and tell them the side effects, the paradoxical effects, and the withdrawal effects of these medications. Instead, the clinicians call the patients crazy and said they had pre-existing conditions, which is untrue 99% of the case. Um. I'm also known for uh, my work as lead trial counsel in the case Johnson v. Monsanto. We were able to secure a $289 million verdict where a unanimous jury in San Francisco concluded that Monsanto had been acting with malice. Many of the things that are interpreted as syndromes or symptoms by practicing physicians are induced by the toxins we're taking in all the time. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat. They're all toxic. A lot of people don't realize that there's a, a, an important interplay between the way we eat food and the way we treat illness. And if you are a company that has the ability to create illness, specifically through uh, pesticide or other types of things that can cause injury in people, and then you sell the drugs to treat that illness, you kind of have created a market and then can make money off that market. It's, it's a double whammy. It's called synergy in the sort of corporate world. The vast majority of time, pharmaceutical companies get away with, with what would be, in any other normal circumstance, a crime. They ought to go to jail. You have every right to speak, and you should have absolutely no fear for speaking the truth. Children committing suicide um, due to certain medications that they're on is definitely not a myth. It's, it's the truth. And some of the things that I see in a facility just make me feel like the system can do a little better with our kids. A lot of these medications, it's in the fine lines, causes suicidal ideation, causes aggression, agitation. But even the FDA admits that these drugs induce suicidality in children. Um, I am Ann Blake Tracy, the one who began really looking at antidepressants clear back in 1989. I testified at the first FDA hearing in 1991, and I've testified at every hearing that they have had on these drugs since that time. 
We have way too many police officers in this country taking these drugs that are almost identical in action to LSD or PCP. That's making them become violent, impulsive, and paranoid. The last thing we need to be seeing from police officers. My name is Carol Herman and I live in Sacramento, California, and I'm the president and the founder of the Foundation Aiding the Elderly, also known as FATE. I would say the majority of the people that we serve, their demise starts with over-medication. Every drug has a side effect, and some of them are very, very serious. People don't realize that they have the right to refuse medications, and that's under the federal law. You can refuse any treatment. This is America. You do not have to do what the doctor tells you. You do not want to lose your mind. So make sure before you take a medication that you find out what it is and what the side effects are. It was no more than 30 days later after the FDA assured everyone that there was no problem with Prozac. There was a woman in our neighborhood getting her three children ready for church. She took a sheep shearing knife and a hammer and killed all three children chasing them through the home and then stabbed herself twice in the heart. And of course I did investigate, found out she was on the medications when this happened. I thought, come on, how could you tell us that the drugs are okay? Coming soon from Taka Productions.